Spider-Man's comic history is convoluted to say the least, especially the newer comics, goddamn. But recently I've been dwelling on the comics of old and what could have been. One issue I think Spider-Man comics and just comics in general have in modern day is that they are never ending, not allowing the current characters to die off and for their stories to be finished. I understand that the appeal to constantly have the most popular characters be consistently upheld as the staple of their respective universes is all the more popular with editorials, most notably Spider-Man of the Marvel Universe and the Trinity of the DC Universe, but in many cases these characters and their stories have been milked to the bare bone, which is why so many comics such as Spider-Girl written by Tom DeFalco are so, so interesting. Before we continue the video, subscribe! What are you doing? This is a Spider-Man channel and you clicked on this video so you like Spider-Man, so what are you waiting for? Subscribe! Legacy characters are something that comics miss, and when legacy characters do become a mainstay for the series, the original always ends up coming back. Some notable examples from Marvel themselves is Sam Wilson's Captain America, in which Steve Rogers ended up coming back anyway. And obviously Miles Morales. His universe is Peter Parker from the Ultimate Universe ended up dying. But either way, Miles just ended up coming to the 616 universe where Peter Parker existed anyway. Either way, the legacy characters will always be outshone by the original at some point no matter what. This is the reason why I love Marvel's What If series they did back in the 90s, which essentially took crucial moments in the 616 continuity and expanded upon them and their untold stories. And by far, my favourite story is the one of May Parker, or as many of you will know her as, May Day Parker, aka Spider-Girl. Spider-Girl is one of the most influential legacy characters to have ever existed in comic book history. And Spider-Girl's own series, which gained so much popularity to the point in which it ran for eight years, is the perfect example of why they are so important. Aging up a character like Peter Parker was something that was always inevitable, since he started out as a 15-year-old kid in high school. It was evident that at some point down the line, he would end up becoming a college student, and then an adult, and then a father. However, in the 90s, Peter and Mary Jane's daughter in the 616 universe was prevented to be taken any further. This downfall of the lack of progression allowed by the Marvel editorial resulted in One More Day, which completely erased any history Peter had with Mary Jane and his marriage with her. However, the Spider-Girl series explores the what-if scenario of what if none of that happened? What if Mary Jane and Peter Parker lived together happily ever after and their daughter prospered? May Day made such an impact as a character that she is one of the most well-known versions of the webhead out there. Her impact was felt across the board, with her even now having an on-screen appearance in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Not only is Mayday such a cool character to begin with, as DeFalco manages to write her in this book as an extremely likeable and playful character, but she also emulates a massive positive for the character of Peter Parker as well. Peter's character has been stuck in a loop of not progressing forward for the last 30 years or so in his own series. Whenever he goes forward, he takes two steps back. No matter what happens in the comics to Peter, I can always assure you that he will end up back at square one again. It's just something that happens. It just, you can't escape it. This issue is fixed by the Spider-Girl comics. These comics still tell a Peter Parker story, except Peter isn't the one at the helm, it is his daughter. Peter takes more of an Uncle Ben role in this comic, teaching Mayday the ropes as to what it means to hold the powers. Mayday represents how legacy characters can not only be as interesting as their predecessors, but can also hold their own in their own comic book series. I now have my good friend Protocol, who has happily agreed to come on the channel and talk a little bit more about why the comic is so memorable. So take it away. Hi guys, Mayday Parker might actually be one of the most iconic versions of Spider-Man within the comic book fan. Obviously one of the reasons why is because she is in fact Peter Parker's and Mary Jane's daughter in a very different earth after the Crone Saga. When it comes to those comics, even though they came out in the 90s, that story and what she brings to the mythos of Spider-Man does make it very, very memorable. So much so to the point that people really want that to happen in the 606 universe. And with what's currently going on in the comics right now, I would definitely agree. And talk about the comics itself is really really interesting to see Peter Parker and Mary Jane just being parents and just taking care of their daughter is obviously so wonderful to see especially when those two characters have been through so much so it's really really great to see them having some sort of peace. Especially when Mayday was kidnapped and was almost delivered to Norman in order to kill her like he did in the 616 universe. Fortunately that didn't happen it did cause things to be very very different like Peter and Norman Osborn having the final confrontation which led 
led to Norman's death as well as Peter losing a leg and even though he gets a new one by Reed Richards it does force him to quit being Spider-Man and just taking care of his daughter as his main responsibility which obviously makes sense as he's a brand new father and the story does a wonderful job just showing that Peter Parker is capable of being a father and that is the right direction to take when it comes to the character and how he should end up even if he retires of being Spider-Man he doesn't really retire from ever giving up or just doing the right thing and even though he kept his secret as Spider-Man from May he did it for her own benefit and just to make sure that she grows up a normal life but eventually when her powers starts to kick in especially in a basketball game eventually they do realize that she has inherited Peter's powers and the dynamic it creates when it comes to the Parker family is really really great to see especially when we see Mayday playing basketball from the get-go just showing that she has very different interests than her dad as we know Pierre wasn't really into sports he's into baseball but just as a fan he hasn't really partaken it as a sport himself so just seeing Mayday basically casually just playing basketball and even unintentionally just showing her powers even though she is Peter Parker's daughter she is still very very different from him but when it comes to Peter obviously he's very worried the fact that she has his powers especially when MJ basically reveals everything to her and I thought it was really really great especially when you know we do see MJ explaining to May that she does have an Uncle Ben obviously referring to Ben Riley, who gets killed by Norman just like he did in the 616 universe and seeing his costume which she later dons but of course the main villain is the Green Goblin but it's neither Norman or Harry but instead Harry's son Normie Osborn wanting revenge for thinking that Peter killed his grandfather and his father and of course the feud between the Parkers and the Osborn continues while Norman almost kills Peter we do see Mayday finally don Ben Riley's costume and just basically just using her powers naturally almost as naturally as Peter did and it's really really great to see it goes to show that no matter what version we're talking about when it comes to Spider-Man or Spider-Woman or in this case Spider-Girl they're always going to fight a version of the Green Goblin who's going to threaten their family or New York in its entirety and of course we do see Peter very very worried because he doesn't want his daughter to go through the same things that he went through especially when he lost his leg and all the trauma being Spider-Man caused him he's trying to save her from that and of course it leads to her burning the costume eventually she does create a new version of it basically being the exact same thing but it does lead to Peter accepting his daughter as spider girl and being there for her no matter what helping her realize her potential as a spider person and seeing that it's kind of emotional especially when we know the history of peter parker and that he's willing to basically accept that regardless of what happens this is his daughter's responsibility too so i really love that they showcase that that being said the comic is pretty old and takes a few things that aren't really at least in my opinion aren't really that great like for example the cult norman is a part of at first i didn't really mind it i think after norman's death is something they should have definitely ditched but it's not really present throughout it's just present in a little bit but that's basically one of the few negatives that i have when it comes to this one as well as obviously it is pretty short and that marvel doesn't really give her the attention she deserves since she's not in the 616 universe but obviously all of us can agree that she should be we connected her well to peter and mj their relationship and their both personal struggles so just seeing them having a family of their own where they have a little peace is really refreshing to see and i think one of the things that Mayday represents to me at least is of course legacy and that uh, when you're carrying something that's important or even a mantle like Spider-Man it's important to not just make it your own but also carry what it means at the end of the day which is of course responsibility and just doing the right thing regardless and just seeing how that's exactly what she's doing really goes to show that that, that day she became Spider-Girl was truly the first day of the rest of her life. I just want to say thank you so much for having me Lewis it really really does mean a lot to me. In the end the Spider-Girl comic series is something that I think remains as a staple of what makes the Spider-Man series of comic books great. It explores an alternate timeline which fans largely consider to be the most enjoyable outcome of the characters of the Spider-Man mythos, as it wasn't afraid to take the character of Peter Parker in a different but yet still enjoyable direction. Mayday as a character is written so well and integrated into the Spider-Man mythos really interestingly, proving that if she was to have originally appeared in the 616 universe, her character would have worked. Marvel and DC and other comic book publications shouldn't be afraid of legacy characters because because at the heart of it, they matter. They matter a lot. And eventually, you're going to run out of interesting things to say and stories to tell about the once beloved Golden Age characters that still manage to steal the pages of our comics to this day. I want to thank Protocol for coming on the channel. It was a pleasure. A link to his channel will be in the description down below so you can go and subscribe to him.
Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Make sure to subscribe, take care, and peace.